Okay, um, in this section, we are going to see uh, how to create a scheduled notifications, which is we can define at what time and what date the notification will appear. Okay, so um, we we are doing this in the to-do applications. We adding this speaker, as you can see here, we click on the date that you can choose the date and also the, the time picker, we can pick the time and when the to do offered you or comes up um, you will see the notification about your to do okay so stay tuned on the next hours to study about the notifications and the work menu i just gotta say this it is the secret i'm feeling so great i'm riding that starship that took me straight to the highest place on top of the Right. Welcome to week 12 Advanced Native Mobile Programming and these sections discuss mostly about the notification and work manager. Okay, so um, as usual, I will uh, explain a, a bit a concept before we continue on the, the projects. Yeah, so um, I know that I already explained about notification previously in week 7, but this time we will combine uh, the notification with the work manager to create something called like scheduled notifications, a notification that trigger on specific date and time. And this notification should appear even the app is no longer active. Okay. And of course, uh, I will show you how to work with work managers and uh, we'll doing that on the actual projects. Yeah. And then, and, and as you know it, that in the latest Android, for example, uh, for especially for Oreo above, you will require to create notification channel. Okay, so the notification channel is mandatory. Okay, so before we um, talk about work managers and how can it give a benefit for us to create a schedule notifications, you should know that actually notification styles comes up in different styles, yeah? So the notification comes up in different styles. So the basic style is something like this, like this, yeah? The black one is um, KitKat, I guess. I'm sorry, uh, no good. Oreo, yeah? Okay, this the black one is Oreo. Um, this one is no good. And this one is Marshmallow, I guess, okay? So um, this is a basic one. Uh, and this is a, the big, text style of your notification as you can see you see the uh, large uh, area of the notifications cover up with a text this one is a big picture style which is um, same as a big text style but this one the large area uh, replaced with a giant image yeah large pictures and this one is um, notifications with inbox styles which is you can see several message of your inbox and then the, the next one is a messaging styles shows you um, uh, messaging uh, notifications that shows message message from uh, one person with another person just like you see in regular messenger applications and the last one is the media okay this media styles shows you um, different shortcut that you can react about that notification. So for example, if you see this notification about someone posting something, you can give a like, you can uh, make it favorites uh, as a friend and so on. So you can uh, do uh, directly, do the action directly from the notifications, All right? So uh, what is the difference between push and schedule notifications, okay? So uh, the definition of Push notification is a message that pop up on user device and usually triggered by application publisher, okay, in certain conditions. So for example, uh, I would like to give a promo to my uh, user, my application user. So I will um, define the uh, push message notification so I can broadcast my message to all my users of my application so uh, they can receive that notification this is called push notifications okay 
And what is a scheduled notifications? Okay, scheduled notification is the pop-up message that have been planned before on the background process. So it will deliver at a particular time. Okay, so for example, um, uh, for instance, yeah, you set an alarm that need you to wake up at 7 a.m. at uh, next morning. So, so the notification probably shows up to you at a before that time and try to wake you up. Yeah, just simple like uh, alarm things in your phones do the same thing also. Okay. Next, um, yeah, uh, you already know how to create notification in week seven. So I will focus more on the work manager. Okay. So what is work manager? It's an API that makes easy to schedule some tasks that are expected to run even the app access or the device um, restart. Okay, so even the app is not access, yeah, I guess, and device restart. So it means that um, the work manager means a process that can be run in the background even your application is no longer active and it will execute it the process uh, at a time, okay? So to enable work manager, you have to add following dependency. Yeah, so you see the implementations, Android Xbox X work, runtime with 2.5.0 version here. Right, next, um, to work with a work manager uh, API, you need, first you need to create a worker class. So the worker class is basically an extension from the worker, yeah, worker class here. So it requires you to pass the context and the parameter here. And there is only one function that you need to implement, which is the do work. This one is um, a method that runs asynchronously on the background thread provided by a work manager. So this one will run asynchronously. And then inside this function, you you put the process, you put the task that must be done, okay, on the background, okay? You put the task that must be done on the background. For example, uploading image, downloading updates, okay? Checking for an update, yeah? So for us and, and so on and so on, okay? So it, it do something that runs on the background. So the result could be success, could be failure and retry if if failure shows that uh, shows on, on this process, the worker class may retry it based on constraint and policy, policy that you put in the worker request. Okay, so let's talk about worker request. So the worker, the work request is an object that contains all of the information needed by work manager to schedule and run your works. Means that you put different constraints, you put different configurations of the worker uh, things. So uh, the work request will, will contain that information and send it to the work manager. Um, there are two derived implementation of this class. Yeah, We are not directly use this class, but we usually use the uh, extension of this class. And there are two distinctive implementation of this class, which is which is uh, really useful. The first one is a one-time work request, and the second one is a periodic work request. One-time work request is used to create a job that runs only once, yeah. Periodic work request, as, as, shown, as shown as its names, it will run a task, it will execute a task periodically within a time period, okay with the interval of time period. So for example, you will you can create something that runs every hour, maybe to check for the latest message, maybe to check for the latest update and so on. Okay. So um, this is the code, how to create a one-time work request. Uh, basically it's very easy, you just need your builder. And my work here is the worker class that you provide earlier. So that one. Okay, and you can set an additional configurations, a lot of configuration you may set on the work request and just call build. Okay, so this one is an example of periodic work request. In the periodic work request, you have to define the interval time. So for example, um, the, the worker here, the save image to file worker here will be repeat 
every one hours yeah every hours one hour so so every hours it will execute this task save image to file right so that's one uh, very easy and the work request also can have configurations such as the work constraint here this constraint to ensure that work is divert until optimal condition are met yeah this, this one is not meet but met yeah the constraints which is checking for several conditions if not if the condition is not met the works is pending okay if the work is different so uh, there's several conditions that you can set up such as the network type which is you you can detect whether the applications and the smartphone have access to the internet okay battery not low okay so the works will execute it will be executed if the battery not low the request charging is the opposite of battery not low the device is idle and of course the storage is not low okay this is the for constraint and then you can define the constraint with, with the constraint builder something like this so in this example we define a constraints that check for a network type unmetered means that is the smartphone connected to the internet and uh, is the smartphone requires charging okay if both are uh, uh, written true means that uh, the works is valid and it can be executed okay so uh, this is the work request one time work request builder you you define the worker here and you set the constraint based on these conditions which is uh, the my work here will be run if uh, the smartphone connected to the wi-fi and it requires charging yeah it's a low low battery modes okay so that's uh, how to work with work constraint and next um how to create a delayed work um previously as you can see in the in the previous example something like this for example the one time request here it will launch off run immediately okay there is no delay at all if you want to add a delay or something that prevent it to run immediately you can define a set initial delay configurations and you can use different time units yeah either minutes seconds hours and milliseconds and so on so uh, for example here this is this is a one-time work request and it delayed 10 minutes so this request will be triggered 10 minutes after it's deployed okay <clears throat> Sometimes you need to um, send an uh, additional parameter of data to the works in order to do something. Yeah. So you, your work may require input data in order to do its work. Yeah. For example, that works that requires you to upload an image, which is require the URI or the URL of the image to be uploaded as input. So in order to do that, inside the worker um, class, you can uh retrieve the the, uh, the data using the input data here so you get grab the input data dot get strings and this one is called key yeah the key value pair so um you access by key yeah and then um, the the result will be ex uh, put inside this image you the input and we do something with it and inside the work request you define the pair of key and value yeah to be sent and read by the worker class so inside this work request you define the keys image uri the value is stpp blah 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 it's separate by a two keyword here two keyword and it will read inside the class worker by uh, using get string or get integer and so on same like you read the intent um parse intent yeah parse data intent okay and after one after uh, the, um after you create the work request and the next thing you need to do is to launch or queue your works yeah so once you define uh, the work and work requests the last steps to is and queue your work the simplest way to enqueue your work is to call the work manager and queue method and then you pass the work request you want to run so the code seems uh, very easy to see here 
it looks like this. So you define work requests, and then in the in the next line is you call work manager get instance, and NQ my work. That's it. Yeah. So when it is executed, it will um, scheduled on the background process, and it will trigger your tasks at that time. Yeah, at that time. All right. How to cancel the work? Yeah, if you no longer need to uh, you do the works, you you can cancel it by uh, cancel it by accessing or uh, accessing the ID of the worker, or cancel by the unique work um, I, uh, name, yeah, unique work name, and cancel the works all works by tag. Yeah, this is very uh, useful if you have more than one worker, and then you can define the same tag. Yeah, define same tag on all those worker, and then you want to stop it all, so you can cancel it by tags. Right, and actually, there's a lot of things you need to know about the work manager. But I, I encourage you to do the self study about work re worker retry and back of policy. Uh, means that something failed, but but policy you should do uh, about it. Yeah, you can retry it or just ignore it. How to observe the works and how to change the works and and, and so on. Okay. Okay, um, that's the concept. Yeah, that's the concept about work manager and notifications. Let's try the exercise. Okay, I need you to open, reopen the to do project, uh, which is week or uh, was created on week eight. Okay, so we go back with to do notifications. So what we're going to do is creating the notification helper. Okay, is a helper class that provide modular and practical object to create the notifications okay so uh, let's uh, do that open your project and okay let me close the emulator first okay uh, you can right click on the util new Kotlin class file, choose class, and then you can type the class name of notification, notification helper, right? So this is an empty classes, and um, because uh, we are going to use pending intent, you require to uh, use the context, yeah, as the constructor. So you define a context here. Okay. So first, um, you need to create two things, the channel ID and notification ID in order to work with the notification. So we can define it, prefer for channel ID. It basically um, random or unique, yeah? Unique string that you can define on your own to do channel um, ID. And the next one is the notification ID. Okay, when I, once again, this one is an integer. It could be, it could have a random integer number. Okay, next, um, we are going to download first the two file from the ULS, okay? The to do chart and the checklist PNG, okay? So I already uh, put it on the ULS. So if you see here, we got to do chart and the checklist, you can copy it and paste it inside the drawable. Okay, just refactor. Okay, do this, do it once again, and next time, and next one you choose uh, the normal versions. Okay, refactor. So we have to image the checklist PNG. It should looks like this, and the two two chars is JPEG. It still looks like this. So we are going to use this image uh, to show to show to the user through the notifications. Okay, because we are going to implement the big picture styles notifications. Okay, the next one we create the notifications channel. So the notifications channel is important if you work with an uh, emulator or a smartphone uh, Oreo above. Yeah, Oreo API or above. Okay, create notification channel. 
Okay, something like this. Um, for user that use previous Android versions, yeah, like KitKat and old Android versions, uh, no need to use the create notification channel. But this one, uh, we have to check it with the build. I think you need to import it. Versions dot SDK integer here. Bigger than build dot versions codes dot Oreo. Yeah. So we check first if the user smartphone is Oreo or above. So you need to create a notification channel. Okay. Um, so we create a new one for channel notification channel okay we define the first is channel id this one is a title you can write any title or any name so i think i'm used the same thing like channel id and notification manager compat Oh, sorry, sorry, not not that, that combat. Okay, notification manager port uh, dot importance. So the third parameter is the priority of the notification. So you can set it top priority or just use the default. Okay, and next you can define additional uh, configurations like descriptions, like this. Yeah, to do channel descriptions okay so uh, you can uh, use something like this or you can follow uh, along with uh, you can do the same thing like on the slide so instead of um, calling the channel description here you can use apply okay let me show you so you call just call apply so whatever you write inside this apply uh, you can access uh, the attributes of the notification channels directly without uh, write the channel again. So in this case, if you want to access the descriptions, like in, in previous example, you just need to call the descriptions here. This description is belong with the channel object here. So we can um, equal, set equals here, control V, yeah, that's it. Okay, for channel, notification channel, apply, and then um, we set descriptions. Next, we create the notifications manager. Okay, context that get system surface context dot notification surface. So, so we uh, require uh, we request the surface of the smartphone here, especially that trigger the notifications. So the notification manager have this create notification channel and we put the channel. So basically we use notification manager to create notification channel based on these configurations. Okay, so that's it for create notification channel. Next, we create the notification function. Uh, fund create notification, right? So um, in order to make the notifications modular, so it can be used in different occasions, I will provide a, a parameter, string, title, and of course the content or the message, strings, okay. Okay, next we call the create notification channel first. Next one, uh, we going to create an intent, yeah, means that if the user touch or click the notification, it will trigger the intent object that we define here. So we create the intent by using the full intent equals, okay, intent, okay, um, context, a main activity, class dot Java. So it means that this intent will uh, open up the main activity if you launch it, okay? And we want to deploy a flag, yeah, dot uh, apply. Once again, I do the same thing like previously. So I 
I can set something, uh, define a configurations for this intent by just calling the the attributes like flex here. Okay, so intent dot flag activity new task or intent dot flag activity clear task. Okay, so what is this flag for use for okay to flag activity new task if set this activity will become the start of a new task on this history stack so um, the main activity will shows as the start at the very beginning of the back stack yeah so it will be defined as the primary uh, the root yeah the root activity on the back stack flag activity clear task this tag this flag will cause any existing tags that will be associated with the activity to be cleared before the activity is started just for example if you already have a back stack fill it with multiple instance of main activity it will be destroyed all and it and uh, this flag will create a new main activity yeah so it will dis destroy the reminder main activity the other main activity and and make sure that there is only main activity in the back stack so this is very important okay next um we are not launched the intent immediately we are going to use a pending intent pending intent okay how to create pending intent is very simple get activity activity here and you define the context and the request code is zero and the intent is the object of the intent and the flag is zero so we put this intent in here the request code zero and flex zero so what is pending intent pending intent is a token or an object that you give to another applications yeah as such as notification manager alarm manager and so on that allows those application to your to use your permissions to execute a predefined piece of code means that um even the application is no longer active we uh, can launch the intent so this and this intent will handled by other applications by operating systems and it will launch whatever you define in here so it will call the main activity okay right so next after you create a pending intent uh, we are going to create the notifications we building the notifications so because i'm going to create a big picture style notifications so first we need icon we need a bitmap icon okay we call bitmap factory dot decode resource context dot resource uh, comma r dot drawable dot so we going to access the okay we need to import first to do char okay so this one is the big image of to do char dot jpeg yeah so we load it inside the full icon next we create the op notification object by using the builder notification compat dot builder the context and of course the channel id okay so it use a uh, method chaining so we can set another configurations so uh, at first we set the small icon and you can directly access the small icon by using the R drawable. And we set the large icon also. And this time you need to access the object of Bitmap Factory. And next we set the content title. Okay, the, the title of notifications, which is we can grab from here. Okay, next we set the content text once again you can grab it from this message here okay next yeah the style set style okay 
In this style, we are going to use the big picture style notification compat dot big picture style. Of course, you can experiment with another style like media messaging messaging style, inbox style, or just a basic style. But this time we just work with the big picture styles and inside it you can define the big picture bitmap uh, file which is you can access it from, from icon and big large icon just set it as null because i'm not going to show a lot icon at this time so i just use this to show giant image on the notifications okay next set content intent means that if user click the notifications, it will trigger the pending intent. The pending intent will trigger this main activity to come up to create it on screens. Next, um, set priority. You can de define it as a priority default. And finally, build it, yeah. So we build the the whatever you see the configuration here as the object of notifications. Okay, so the notifications notification manager combat dot from context dot notify. Okay, so we put the notification ID comma the notification so this is uh, the functions to trigger the notifications okay so this is whatever we need to create notifications let's try it in the create to do the, the create to do which is located at the create to do fragment here so okay on the button creates okay my create to do fragment still not use data binding we are going to fix that later but uh, let's try the notification first so after toasting we can call the notification helper okay uh feed i'm sorry should be uh you can access the view the context via view here or it yeah whatever you want you can access via view or it just access it from it 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 dot con text okay and call the function of create notifications this one okay it requires two things the title and the message so to do created or just say yeah the to do created and next the message will be a new to do has been created stay focused right so that's um uh we that's how we define uh, notifications and let's try it yeah okay let's try to run this let me play run the emulator first and play it okay i'm going to pause and i will show you after uh, several second letter so let's uh, try it we click this create new to do we enter something here and also something in here and create to do okay the notification shows up as you can see here it used the not the checklist icons but it's not colored yeah it's uh, it's just as a, a shadow here, yeah, I guess, or as a silhouette. And when you drag it down, you see this is the notifications with the icons shows in here. And you drag it more, you can see the big picture styles as you can see here, right? If you uh, click on it, so let's let's close this app, okay? Close this app, and you drag it you click on the notifications tap on the notification it will launch the pending intent and it will launch the main activity okay so it works fine yeah
So let's combine it with the work managers, okay? On the previous example, um, you see that the notifications is immediately appear. On the week seven, we can create a delay with using the Rx Java coroutine. But this time, I'm going to set a delay notification using the work manager API, okay? So in order to make it works, you have to implement the work manager API by opening up the build grader module in the dependency one here. You type the implementation Android X dot work work runtime mean KTX 2.5.0. Don't forget to sync now uh, with uh, several seconds to activate the work manager. Okay. Next, um, we are going to create worker class. Yeah and set it as to do worker so back to the, the i think this one is in utility class okay right click on the utility class new kotlin class file and give name as to do worker class yeah something like this okay uh, we extend this to do worker with the worker from the work manager so just type work yeah, worker here and uh, wait. Okay. Okay, uh, let's, so, so don't do that. So uh, first create this uh, constructor first, the fall context, context. Second one should be params of worker parameter. Okay, I think there's something wrong with this. Okay. Okay, worker. Okay, let me check it first. Okay, guys, I make a mistake on the implementation. It should be work, yeah, not word. It's okay, work, yeah. Sing now first. Okay, so we can extend it to worker. At this time, you can see this. Enjoy X work is shows here. When you click on it, you can see the import works fine. Okay, so it requires the context here, and also it also requires the params, fall params, worker parameters. Okay, let's import it first, the worker parameter here, and pass it as the seconds constructor so it shows you it shows that it requires two things the context and the worker parameters okay uh, let's implement on one and only one function here the two two works which is unsynchronous functions you can delete the rest okay next what should be put inside the two two works yeah as as you know it, that we are going to use this work to trigger notifications so we um, we do the same thing like this just let me copy it from the create to do fragment control V it here and the context will be the context from this one and the create notifications it uh, it requires you to put the title and the message for the title and the message, you can grab it using the input data. Okay, I will explain that later, but let's first um, access the input data, get string, and the key here, you can provide it with title string here. Okay, you have to convert it to string. And do the same thing for the message. Input data dot get string message dot to string so uh, what you do here is you access the title key and you access the message key to retrieve the value and use that as the parameter of create notifications finally you can return the result as success okay 
always success. So even the even the notifications failed is always success. Okay. Next, um, we create the reboot the work request at at specifically we create a delayed work request. Okay. So let's reopen the the create to do fragments. Yeah, because we already have the worker now. Let's let's uh, use this worker in the create to do fragment yeah in here so let's um comment this notification helper and um create the 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 work request my work request and then we use one time work request builder and the type here you use the work your worker yeah use the worker the to do worker okay and you set the initial delay let's say 30 seconds yeah 30 seconds time unit dot seconds okay and then uh okay we set input data why because uh in the worker in the to-do worker here it access the input data so we have to provide it from here so you just type work data off and you write a key and value pairs. So key always string, yeah? So title and the value could be anything, okay? To do, create it and message to, okay, let's just copy it from here. right so it shows shows you something like this let me delete the notification here all right so this is um, the input data work data of a pair of key and value the title and the message so this input data will read it by to the worker in here will retrieve by its key okay next just build it Next, um, queue it using the work manager. All right, work manager dot, okay, I think you need to import it first. Yeah, dot get instance require context dot nq the my work request. Okay, let me check it first. Um, I guess I'm I'm not used to to, to create it here. I think I will use the title here. Okay, so just copy it, paste it in here, and the notes. Copy it and paste it in here. I guess. Okay, so it shows you um, a same. Uh, uh, it shows it shows notifications about uh, the particular to do. Okay, so let's do that. Let's try it. Let's play it, and let's take a look how it looks like. Okay. Okay. Let's try to create a new to do, so you can write whatever you like um study study hard to get better mark yeah for example um let's create the to do here so you create the, click the create to do the the to do has been created and it set up the work request and it delayed 30 seconds. So just wait uh, 30 seconds for the notifications appears, okay? Because we set the, the initial delay here, so even, even the application is no longer exists, no longer active, I mean, this notification should work fine because it's already registered on the background. See, this notification icon shows up even there is uh, no uh, no active application here so when you drag down 
you can see this is the title of the notifications, which is the study, the study titles. And this one is the notes. When you click on it, it shows you back to the main activity. OK, all right, back to the main activity of the study. OK, so we can take out. All right. OK, so it works fine. Now uh, let's continue on on the next sections. OK, in this sections, um, you already know how to create notifications and then use Work Manager to schedule your notifications that trigger on uh, on the delayed uh, seconds. Yeah. So with that in with that knowledge, we can create a scheduled notifications means that we want to trigger the notifications to alarm the users of the to do. Yeah to do that should be done in the particular date and time. So in that case, um, we are going to implement a picker wrestler, but here's the problem, yeah? Work manager cannot handle specific work request date and time, means that you cannot set a date and time that the work request must be executed. You cannot do that, but you can only count delays in time, yeah? So you cannot, set a specific date time but you can set a delays in time for example one minute 30 seconds one hour one day and so on with um uh the alternative solutions for this problem is to use another api called alarm manager but it's beyond our topics today so um the proposed solution here is we are still using the work mode manager but um the solution we we will try is first we convert the scheduled date time into the Unix timestamp. Unix timestamp is a uh, how many seconds um, from the 1970, the epoch time until today. Yeah, that's called Unix timestamp. And then um, we find the differences in seconds between the scheduled timestamp and the current time. So we get the differences in seconds and then after that, we set the delay of the notification based on the differences. Yeah, that's the solutions. Okay, so based on that solutions, let's um, setting up our picker. We're going to pick the the date, we pick the time, and then we find the differences in seconds between two dates, and we set delay based on that value. Okay, so let's do that. At first, we have to prepare data binding. As you know, um, our create still not using data binding, okay? Let's do that first. Um, oh yeah, before we prepare data binding, I think you need to add the new vector assets, the calendar and the, uh, what is called uh, the time, okay? Let's open up your projects, right click on the drawable new vector asset and look for the calendar, right? Okay, next, finish. Do it again, new vector asset. Let's find the time, access time. Okay, next, and finish. All right, so we have two icon here that will be used in the text input layout, okay? So I will show you after this, okay? So next, uh, if you want to work with the data binding, you have to wrap your layout with the layout wrapper. So open the create fragment, ed, uh, sorry, not edit to do, the, the fragment create to do. Yeah, I think I need to close others. Yeah, okay. And open your codes inside it. We will wrap everything with the layout. Okay, don't forget to put the layout in the bottom and we cut paste the XML namespace to the layout. Okay, that will do, that will work for uh, our layout and for our layout for data binding. And next, uh, what you need to do is to rebuild the project. Yeah, remember, every time you make a change in the layout for the binding process, you have to rebuild. Okay, just wait for several seconds. Okay, then next um, we add several variables, the to-do and the radio listener. Okay, 
So in that case, we create data here and variable, variable. So the variable names should be to do. Okay, let's wait uh, several seconds. All right, uh, to do, and it take from come um, model to do. Okay, I guess. And the other one is the listener, the radio listener. I think I will copy and paste from the edit to do. As you still remember that we already create the radio listener for that one. Control C because it's used the same uh, variable. Yeah, the radio listener here, and we already have the interface for that. Next, um, create data binding on raw correspondent view. I'm, uh, that means that we um, we have to bind uh, everything here that includes the the enter title here, the txt title, Android text uh, at equals because we are going to create two way data binding, opening and closing, and to do dot title. Okay. Copy paste it and click the enter nodes here. This one should be nodes. For the radio button here, I think you need to copy and paste from uh, the edit to do. Okay, so find find the radio button. You just need to copy this tag on click into the high priority here. Okay check on click so you need to delete the, the old check through here so android check it to do priority through false let me minimize it okay so um in the edit to do in in, in the previous weeks um we set the check property based on the priority is the priority tree which it's it will be checked as true and when we click the radio button, we update the priority of to do. So based on that information, we can copy Control C and paste it for the second radio button. You just need to change this to and to and do it again for the final lowest priority radio button. So it should be one and one. Okay. Don't forget to rebuild the project yeah rebuild the project okay so um the next one we need to do is uh, create the binding for the button create so we still use the access by view access by view for listener for this create to do and we're going to change that with the binding listener so go to the in interfaces dot kt you already have it and we add binding the interface for binding interface uh, button at to do click listener right okay and then we define function on button at to do uh, yeah and we use only one few Okay, all right. Yeah, this is the inter listener. Next, after you create one, you create a variable in the fragment create to do, and it should be in the top. This one, all right? Let's create new one variable, 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 and should be a listener. It taken from a uh, com. the view and button at to do listen okay and then we uh, set that up binding for the button so click the button create here click it and in the on click listener on click listener okay so we call the listener listener and we, we, because we don't use any parameter custom parameter we just called the on button at to do 
that's it. Yeah. So this is we define the binding for the listener. Yeah, binding for the button creator too. Okay. All right. Because we define two variables here, the radio listener and the listener, we need to instantiate it first. Don't forget that. Instantiate it and and we have to comment the original button at listener. But before we do that, let's rebuild the project. Okay. Okay. And we already done this. And next we can, we want to implement the button at to do click listener on the create to do fragment. So inside the create to do fragment here, uh, you need to implement two things. First is the, yes, of course, is the button at the do listener. Next second is the radio, radio click listener, all right? So we implement all those members, these two things, just press okay. You can see the on button at the do and uh, uh the arm right you click and what you need next thing to do is just to comment everything in the original add button or button create so let's do that going to comment everything oh, okay wait uh it should be from this from this to the very end of the button create okay so we comment this out Okay, next, we have the button at to do, we have the radio click. Next, uh, we create the uh, data binding variable, private, let in it for data binding. It's uh, from a uh, fragment, create to do binding, okay, fragment create to do. I hope still you still remember what is this, yeah? is taken from the name of layout, the auto generate classes from uh, Kotlin. And the on create view, we are going to command these returns and we create the f another version of uh, inflator form from the binding. So we call the data binding equals data binding util dot inflate we use the inflator from the parameter comma we still use the same layout dot create fragment create create to do and container and false okay should be looks like this okay i'm going to delete this one going to delete this one and returned returned the data binding to return the data binding as a view object, you have to access the root property of the data binding. Okay, okay, that's it for the on create view. Next, um, we instantiate the several variables that we already defined in the layout. Yeah, uh, there there are three variables here. So um, on the view on view created, first we access the data binding uh, to do. I think. To do so, we because this one is create means that um, we can we can create an empty to do object. Yeah, remember this one is not added. Just create a fragment means that there is no uh, data yet. Okay, so we can create an empty to do here. We can define several uh, default value for this object. The priority set it as three and is done is zero. Right, next. Um, set up the variable radio and listener. Okay, data binding radio listener equals this data binding uh, listener, which is button. Yeah, equals this. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, we put codes for the button. Yeah. This one, uh, I think you can just cut, cut paste or copy paste from the original uh, button create. Let's expand it. So I think going to oh, copy the whole things, Control C, and then paste it 
inside the button add to do control v so let's take a look one by one so um at first uh we no need to wait a wait a minute um can we do it okay 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 yeah at first uh we don't need to use this radio find view by ID, delete it and second you access you create the to do the fall to do it also not un unnecessary you can delete it and the next one uh we add a few model add to do list of to do so what is list of to do here it's an uh to do object and we already have it yeah we already have it and we can access it through the data binding here how to do that it's very simple just call data binding dot to do that's it okay you have to put a double exclamation mark because um this to do could be empty or could be null okay so make sure that it's not null data binding to do a uh, double exclamation mark few metal at to do it's used to um insert the new to do into the database okay to the table so we set it those okay so change it as fee dot context to do created yeah and next um the same program the same codes that you saw uh, you see earlier we have mark work my work request and then 30 seconds delay and blah 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 and so on and so on and the navigation should be fee dot pop back state. okay so it's basically just same as a previous button but a more simple than previous yeah because we remove everything from find view by id and we just access the to do okay because we already set the two-way data binding and and we can directly use that to store or save it into our database okay uh now the radio click listener yeah so you have already have implemented so what you need to do is just copy paste from the attitude to fragment yeah so if you see this in the attitude to fragment you also have on radio click just copy the program here and paste it here yeah that's it right so this on radio click is used to um to set back the priority back to the uh, object to do okay so therefore the to do always have the latest priority value and it will make easier if it will be easier if we uh, use the on it we use in the on button at to do to save the to do object right okay let's run the project um let's see uh is it works or not let's um open the emulator and hit the play button okay okay let's uh see it uh click create a new to do okay let's type something here test oops one two three set its medium property create to do okay and yeah it works fine without uh find view by id without accessing directly to the layout and let's wait for several seconds to see if the notation notification also work finds here let's wait a few seconds guys because we set it as 30 seconds yep it works fine yeah the notifications so means that our binding works fine and it can use be used to replace our previous methods okay okay next one is migrations okay so you now you already uh, set up the data binding for the create fragment and now we can uh, work on the migrations means that we are going to add a new field to do date into the to do table so now my to do object can contain can have a specific uh, to do date yeah so we can set the to do and we can set specific date and time and uh, we are going to add it into the table into the database okay and uh, the to do date field here will have a new field which is the date and time of the to do 
but unfortunately, the SQLite doesn't support a data type of date and time. So um, you can store date time as strings, or you can also store date time as integer. But I'm, I think I will going to save the date and time using integer. Yeah, uh, not in string, but using integer. Why? Because um, I'm not planning to in, uh, store the um, English format of date and time, but I think I will store the Unix timestamp format. Yeah, means that I'm storing the seconds of Unix timestamps in the in the in the type of integers. And why is that? Because well, uh, it makes easier to us to order all the to do based on the time and priority because we set it as integer. It's easier to order that data. Okay. Let's open the model first. <clears throat> Should be in here. Okay. So we add one field, add column, info, name, to do date, far to do date is integer, right? So that's it. Yeah, it's integer. And next, um, after you've done that, uh, you have to increase the database versions. So open the to-do database. It's now is currently in version three. We set it as four. Okay. And then the migrations policy, you need to also to um, create a policy that upgrading from version three to version four just copy one of the migrations and change it from three to four, from three to four. And in that, in that particular upgrade from three to four, we add a new uh, column or field, which is called uh, to do date, right? To do date is integer and default is zero and not now, okay? like a previous okay next um after you've done that don't forget to register these migrations into the build database yeah here and also in the, the to do database in the build database in in here yeah don't forget you have to place it in both places just out enter import yes okay let's run the project make sure that um the migration works fine without error so let's run the project again okay um unfortunately we have build failed here as you can see here because um the error shows here no value passed for parameter to do date yeah it shows in the fragment kt42 and yes of course as as you can see here it lack of last parameter of the to do date. Yeah, we just said it as integer zero. Yeah. Okay, let's play it again this time. Okay, if you can still see the previous data and your locket is fine, I mean, your application is not a crash, it means that the migration works perfectly. Um, now every to do here already have additional field, additional column, which is to do date. And it, the default is a, z, uh, a zero integer, okay? Let's move on to the picker, okay? So the next sections, we add the two date, two, two, two picker, the date picker and time picker, okay? So let's open the layout again, the fragment create to do again and go to the design okay so in here after the radio priority we add two text input layout okay text input layout drag and drop here okay okay uh okay so we attach it to the left top and okay it's very difficult to attach this 
view here and set it as 32 32 i guess oh no 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 not not 32 24 24 24 and 60. all right so we have this and don't forget to change the style into the outline box yeah outline box and find the hint so hint here should be a uh, pick a date pick a date okay pick a date hint animation on hint enable true and expand it click the add uh, the edit text inside it delete the hint and you have to set id for it so this this id should be the txt date txt date and it should be enable true enable true and the focus able false focus sable set it as false you have to type it manually all right so why we set it as that property because um i don't want user to tap manually the date here i i want user to use um only use the picker and pick the date with that pickers and means that it should be on uh, read only yeah it should be read only so to to get that evx you have you can use the enable true and focusable as false okay let's drag and drop another text input under the pick date i don't know okay why my why it's not rendered quickly so just um set it set the constraint left right so this time um this edit text is used for the time picker so the above one is the date picker the below one is used for the time picker once again change the style to outline box okay and find the hint so change the hint to uh, pick a time pick a time right okay pick a time and then hint animation zero and enable true okay right expand the text input layout click the edit text under it delete the hint and give an id txt time okay and same thing here enable set as true focusable set as false enter all right okay oh yeah i almost forgot we are going to add the end icon remember that in previously we, we was at we had at the icons for the calendar and the time so to show the icons you need to click this input layout yeah the input layout here and find the icon yeah just type icon and set the end icon drawable here and choose the calen calendar here just okay and the icon mode should be custom right okay yeah like that it shows small icon here it does nothing just uh, aesthetic uh, functionality just for aesthetic things uh, we do the same thing for this one to able we put we choose alarm okay yeah i think that's it next um, make sure the this create to do is um, constrained below the big at time okay let's do that constrain it below big at time set 16 all right okay next um yeah because uh, as you can see here we have a lot of widget we have a lot of object view here and maybe maybe uh, some of the widget here is off screens yeah it's hidden outside of the smartphone screens and we have to implement the scroll view implement the scroll view um to make to give ability 
uh, for the screens for the UI to be able to be scrolled up and down. Okay, so we can simply add the scroll view, just drag and drop in the frame layout into the frame layout, and you have to delete this linear layout. All right, and move the whole constraint layout into the scroll view. Move the whole constraint layout into the scroll view. Okay. Um, this is scroll view. Uh, is there, okay. Scroll view in the hand. Oh, okay. I think I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Means that every child, every UI you see under the scroll view is scrollable by user. All right. Let's put the interface for these two list uh, edit text here because we're going to apply on click interface in in each of these edit text. So open the interface and first um, let's add interface for uh, date click listener fun on date click fee view right so we do the same thing for interface time click list thinner fun on time click fee view yeah just like that so we have to two interface and this interface is used to trigger the picker yeah the correspondent picker which is the date picker and the time picker so after that uh, back to your fragment create to do on the code we add two new variable variable of a listener date which is com uh, the view date click listener we do the same thing for a listener time com view and this one is time click listener all right okay and click on the pick a date the edit text here of the XT date we uh, set the listener binding in here and draw it on click at list oh yeah yeah oh, sorry sorry i almost forgot before we do that remember you have to rebuild okay rebuild the project okay done rebuilding now go back to this text edit we apply android on click at the listener date okay on okay okay why is not detected detected yes Let's take a look, listener date. Okay, let's clean the project. Okay, and after you clean the project, you can rebuild the project again. All right, let's check it again in here. Yeah, now is uh, accessible by your layout. Copy and paste it in the time. And this time you can uh, you can change this to time on should be on time click. All right. So we have on date click on we have on time click. Okay, rebuild again. Uh, remember if you cannot access it yeah you may clean the project first and do the rebuild project hope that will uh, fix your problems yeah okay next we implement the interface in the create to do fragment go to the top we add we add comma here and we type the uh, date click listener comma time click listener yeah 
update click listener and time click listener and don't forget to implement all members we have to okay yeah this on date click and the on time click and we also defined variable year zero for month zero for day zero for hour zero for minute also zero so we have this because we want to calculate the timestamp the timestamp difference of the of the two dates so we de we create a variable of particular time and date and on the field created we add uh, the listener we def we instantiate the listener data binding dot um, uh, date sorry listener date if you create um, variable in the create you do and you separate the variable with underscore like this in the create to fragment it's you can access the variable and remove the underscores and uh, replace the the date with uppercase here the next letter with uppercase okay so you cannot access it like this yeah it doesn't recognize so you can access it like this okay data binding dot listener time listener time this right okay and uh, because uh, the the uh, the boot Put listener will trigger picker. Yeah, remember I'm going to write a code that trigger picker here, date picker and time picker, and it requires the interface that get handled by the class. Yeah, so we have to add another interface for this class. Okay, comma. Yeah, our class now consists of a lot of interface here. So the first is date picker interface on date select listener and the next one should be time picker dialog on time set listener okay alt enter implement all member just okay so we have four um four functions for implementation of functions Boot function here is used to trigger the dialog, the picker dialog. Boot function here is used to capture the value, the date selected and the time selected by users. Okay, let's work on the on the date click here to trigger the um, dialog. So on the date click here, first we have to access the current date. Okay, get instance. We access the current date um, and then we define the year equals c dot get calendar dot year and for the month c dot get calendar for month for day c dot get calendar of the day of month okay why we need to access three variable here from the calendar we because we want to create the dead picker here right so to create the dead picker you just call the dead picker dialog and then uh, it requires several things first it requires the context object which is you can grab from activity comma uh, the listener which is implement the on date set listener as you can see here this class already have that listener so we just call use this and the next one is the year month and day right and don't forget to call the show dot show okay and you can uh, you can see that this activity is actually highlighted as error you can alt enter on it and wrap it with the let call okay this let call means that first the android will check if the activity is not null then it do whatever you write inside the let 
uh, bracket here. Okay. Okay, that's it for the on date click. And next for the on time click, right here on that on time click, we do the same things, just copy it from above. But this time we only need set, we need to access the hour of the current date time. So remember, this one is used to access the current time and we get a year, month, day of the current time. And we do the same thing, we do the same thing and we access the hour calendar dot hour hour of day yeah hour of day for minute c dot get calendar of minute right so we create the time picker dialog time picker dialog it's use the activity it's also request this hour and minute and the last parameter is used to format the date into is a uh, 24. Wait, 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 date format. I think you need to import, yeah. All right, let me check first. Okay, date format here. Okay, let me check first. Okay. Make sure that you in in the import you use the where is it the date format um yeah you ha you have this import okay android dot text dot format dot date format okay make sure that you have this import uh, if you, if so you can access the is twenty four hour format yeah because we use twenty four hour format and we should put the activity and we call the show okay all right um i think that's it for the the on date click on time click let's delete this to do let's test it yeah let's test the picker it let's test the picker so run the project again okay let's have a look so as you can see here the add button is hidden off the screens yeah because uh, i have small screen emulator here but because we already implement the u uh, scroll view scroll view layout so we can drag it up and down to see the screen to do so let's click the pick a date and you can see the date picker dialog here and when you click the pick time also shows the pick time dialog okay now the picker works fine and you cannot manually edit this text yeah because um focus table set it false so it's only trigger the picker so next one is we are working for to uh we are working for the this okay button yeah when when the when we choose a date we click okay we call the listener on data set and on time set and we do something with it yeah okay so um next one we're going to handle the picker results in the on data set first um you need to change the uh, parameter name here to be more meaningful this should be months this should be day yeah instead of pay one pay two and pay three all right so um all right so let's start with the calendar dot cat instance all right calendar dot cat instance and dot let yeah dot let let me check if the calendar is not now and then if we change the calendar set it as a new value which is retrieved from these informations so set it as year month and day right year month day. so we define a new calendar and we reset the year month and day of the calendar with the whatever you pick from the date picker so uh, after that you um update you update the the edit text that you see here update this edit text that you see here to 
to, uh, to reflect the new value that you pick earlier. So we can access that by using the data binding root dot txt date. Okay, set text. Okay, All right. So first, I'm going to uh, I'm going to display as the dd and uh, mm and yyy format. Okay, I'm going to display in that format. Right. So um, the easiest way to do that is just use the day plus minus plus month plus year. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but it's not net. It's not not simple as that because um, uh, strangely, the the month and the day always begin with um. Sorry, the month, yeah, I guess. The month always begin with a zero. So the if the month is zero, means it's January. One means February. Two is March and so on. So be careful with that information. So we need to add one, I guess, to the month. Okay. So plus one here to the month. And for the day, it's always begin with one, two, and so on. So um, if you want to display something like this, Okay, with the with the leading zero in the front of it, you can use what it, what is called the path start. Okay, so uh, because the month and the day returns single integer and doesn't have leading zero in it, we can use the path start of the is the path start is a function of the string. So we convert it to to, to string here, and we can call path start. Uh, length two because uh, this is consists of two digit yeah length is digit means right and the leading character the leading character is zero if you it can be used to any condition and circumstances if you change it to five it will show you something like this two one two three four five yeah something like that okay next um for the month, we do the same thing. We add the month by one because it starts from uh, zero. We use the path start two and the path chart is zero. And here, you, you, I think you don't need to do anything for it. Okay, already, already find. And next, after user pick the date, user, uh, you have to store it in here yeah in this variable so to access it you can use this dot year all right equals year yeah uh you add this here because you you have to access the variable of the class instead accessing this parameter the same thing this dot month equals month this dot day equals day. All right, so we have these three variables here. Next, um, the on time set here, this on time set, we do the same things for the data binding roots, dot txt time, dot set text. Um, I want to display it uh, with this format. Uh, it's it's um, ii, ii, or whatever it's called, the minutes, yeah. MM, I think it shows hour and minutes. So in order to do that, it's same thing here. It's always start with integer. So we have to add the pet start to hour of day and minute here. So we call the hour of day to string pet start to zero. Uh, separate with bit the column plus minute minute dot to string dot pet start to zero okay and store the informations to our variables this dot minute minute okay i think I need to add this here. 
right yeah that's it okay so on date set on time set we'll store the information of whatever you pick on the picker and store it inside these variables and display it to the uh, edit text next uh, we're going to calculate the delay so we already know that we already have the date and time and what you need what we need to do is convert it to the timestamp and then we can find the differences between the current date and the uh, specific date time that we pick so we can calculate it, that and we can have the seconds yeah the timestamp in unix time we get the seconds delay between those dates so um go back to your on button add to do in here right so uh, once again we access the calendar dot get instance to get today calendar and we modify the calendar with our year month and day and hour and minute okay we uh, modify this C, C um, calendar with year, month, day, hour, minute that we already pick it in here. We have to pick in here. And then to, and we also define the today, the, C, uh, the calendar dot get instance. Okay. To find the differences between today and C, selected the current yeah the two day and the selected date uh the simple way to do that is by call the um function of time in milliseconds time in milliseconds so the c dot time in milliseconds will return the number of milliseconds happen um from the 1970 until today and we have to divide by by 1000 long to convert this to into the seconds so we close this and we minus it with today uh, milliseconds so today dot time in milliseconds divided by 1000 l all right uh, keep in mind that um, I'm not checking if the selected date is uh, before, I mean, is already passed from today date, yeah? Maybe you can select uh, two weeks ago, one day ago, yesterday. I'm not, um, I'm not checked on that, yeah? You have to do that manually. Um, what I mean is that I assuming that a user always pick a future date, yeah? Instead of yesterday date, All right? So we now have the differences in seconds between two dates, and with that information, we can uh, we can set delay on our notification. But before we do that, we have to update the to do date here. So data binding dot to do dot uh, to do date equals uh the the diff yeah hey, sorry sorry not diff but this one the time milliseconds all right okay block it all because the to do date is integer you have to convert it to integer all right you have to add exclamation mark to prevent error on this one to do date time in millisecond divided by 1000 l and convert it to integer and that's it you just store the unix timestamp of the selected calendar and finally this div information is used in here set initial delay okay just replace the, the 30 here with the div time unit seconds okay let's try that yeah let's try that um play it okay let's create a new to do with um with the information of date time to do with the date and time i mean so let's um shopping the title go to market and purchase monthly monthly needs okay i think 
medium property priority and let's pick a date which is on current date sunday may 9th all right just press ok yeah as you can see here it shows 9 of may all right and pick a time here let's say as you can see here currently we have we know at 10 16 so just 10 and move it a little bit to i think to 18 yeah 18 10 18 okay just press okay press create to do all right to do created let's um remove the app and if the time reads 10 18 it will trigger the notifications because we set up the delay from the the, the two dates and it returns the seconds and we use that seconds information to set up the delay of our work requests okay so let's wait a uh, several seconds to see if our notification will really appear on 10 18 because we divided 10 18 okay yeah 10 18 okay uh you see this small notification icon let's drag it down so shopping go to the market and purchase monthly needs yeah it happens on 10 18 just like uh, we said uh in previous uh to do yeah in previously so you can click it to open the main activity and it's true it's bring back us to here to the our to-do list okay all right um yeah all right uh i think that's all for today i think uh, i know this is a long long uh lecture i hope you don't mind about that and and you know how to use the notifications you know how to styling the notifications you already know how to use work managers and uh you work uh, you use this work manager to to create something to create a task that can run in the background okay so you combine both you can create a notification that appear on specific schedule okay if you have any questions about today's topics yeah this section topics you can find me at andrea stuff basically or drop me a chat on the hangout thank you for watching and see you again next time. No, no.